He brought me a new oil pan gasket to replace his oil pan gasket, but as you can see, it's not leaking. I mean, it's bone dry, and the other side's the same thing. There's a little bit coming from the, whatever's leaking by the air compressor is blowing down and then coming across. There's a little bit of a coolant leak here coming from the oil cooler on the other side. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Again, the oil pan is not leaking, but there's coolant there, there's coolant here. That's coming out of the oil cooler. Actually, just dripped. Um, there's a little bit of oil back here, but it's coming out of the, the vent from the top, from the air, uh, from the valve cover. It blows out just a little bit and it's in a position where it can catch it. So we're gonna get this oil cooler issue, see if we can tighten up some stuff down here and get that to stop leaking. It's not horrible, it sat here all night long and it looks like there's just a few drips on the ground. Um, the oil filter is leaking, so we're gonna clean that up and see about just tightening it down, but I, you can definitely tell it's been leaking around it. It's not coming from above, it's coming from the seal there. So we'll just address these few leaks here, but I mean, he's been parked here all night long and I don't really see oil drips on my ground. So he has very minimal oil leaks as it is. It just looks a little bit messy down here, but I can tell you it's not the oil pan gasket. <laughs> There's actually rust. <laughs> That's not how much it's not leaking. Yeah, go ahead. This will be a cold morning start. It's in the 50s. Dad's just showing you what not to do. <laughs> He's got video. one? No, but his wheels have that thing. Okay, so I'm, there's Lance sitting there. All cool, calm, and collected. There better not be a spider behind me. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> See him hanging out yeah. there? <laughs> Lance, Lance no lucky spiders. <laughs> the actual, let, let me see if I can unhook it. Just unscrew it. You got a little flathead on you? No. I'll go grab one. Okay, well, what about some of these other switches right here? Are any of these something we can take out? No, let's put it in here. I, I, I'll work on this later. This is all fried as shit. Or you can just drill a new hole. It's fried because it was arcing? Yeah. Our Custom Coach electrical specialist, Lance, is here to help us today. The Custom Coach conversion is a very complicated wiring system on top of the MCI system, which is already complicated. But uh, so far, we had an intermittent problem with the 12-volt system wasn't working at all with the switch up front. Lance figured out it was just a loose fuse holder, fuse holder which only took us half hour, 45 minutes to track down. <laughs> Can you see this wire? Yeah, right here? it goes all the way back here. This is interesting. <laughs> this, this is the interrupt. Okay, hand her down. Okay. You want me to take it out all together? Um, just can we? Let, let's not. There's no reason not to. Um, do you see where it's hooking to? Down there. Yeah. Down in this spaghetti trap, I'm I'm gonna say we leave it alone on one end. I say we just cap it. Yeah. Okay. God, I'd look like at this man. You almost have. 
That's a custom coach, right? <laughs> yep, exposed, and that was bumping against something. Of course, the way they tried to deal with it was by putting, look at that. <laughs> it just got so hot, it was burning. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yuck. Never like to see black charred <laughs> anything inside a control panel. <laughs> it's good we got this out, brother. Yep. What we'll do is we'll just, uh, we'll cut these and put a wire nut on one of them, both of them, and tape it up and just put it up like this. Okay. <laughs> just the noise, not the sparks. Yeah. Because I think you do have 110 on here. There shouldn't be anything up here. Not in this panel box, but yeah, we got to be careful of that. Famous so we, last words. Yeah, we found an empty unused wire that goes from here to the engine compartment that we're using. Uh, for our propane uh, injection that we're installing. So we've got, we didn't have to run a wire from the front to the back. So how we did that is we looked in the manual and we, first thing we did is we looked for spares. We found two spares. They were being used, Custom Coach had already repurposed them. So we found old, there's two tack sets on this. There's an inductive pickup that goes on the front wheel on some of them. And there's an electronic tack. The, it looks to be that the, old tack the mechanical tack wiring was not used at all and that's what we're using here so as you if you're an mci user and you go through your one through 57 terminal blocks there are then four additional ones here maybe five b w h w r g r and b l and as you can see here some of these are very multi-purposed particularly number 56 right here <laughs> that's this yellow one that they have run all of the radio systems. I think there's uh, about eight wires on that terminal. <laughs> and and 15, amp, 15 amp fuses. So um, Bo doesn't use that. And we actually have talked about removing some of that. So we'll know in the future that's a good, has been a reliable without burning the bus down uh, post. And we had to get 12 volt because this bus is most, everything on here is 24 volt. So we really had to figure out where, we're, where we were going to get our 12 volt lead from because the, the propane switch is 12 volt the the valve that opens and closes is 12 volt so so he, cust, custom coach owners always remember you have three systems 110 24 and 12 volt the unique thing is richard will tell you is they all use the same ground triple bond ground which <laughs> is not to code by 2020 so which is why you can't plug into a ground fault interrupt i assume too it won't work <laughs> Just a, just a heads up, 12 volt is off, but 24 volt is still hot. Okay. So maybe that is still hot when you were banging that around. <laughs> is it charred some more? <laughs> it definitely made a noise that I didn't like. <laughs> the only thing worse could be if a spider was attached to the end of it. <laughs> Arachnophobia. <laughs> that movie terrified me. <laughs> There's nothing like watching that movie... I was in, uh, we were in France, and there was a base on the very southern side, uh, northern border of France with Germany, and we were watching that, and nothing like a, a theater full of soldiers messing with each other during the movie. <laughs> you can just imagine, Bo. Uh, here, uh, <laughs> do you want to push that wire up now? Permissons, France, that's where we were. Uh, Nowhere? Do you want to put the switch up through this old hole? This old hole. It's a new right. show on HBO. Uh, let's see. Can I? I can get it up through there. Well, I, th but what's going to happen? See, the wiring from the switch panel is going to come in there and, and intrude on that space. I need to get it uh, behind here. Let me take a look. Needs to. Yeah. Here we go. Now let's point out something to our viewers if we're filming. Yep. <laughs> On our new switch that we're using, we're using these spade connectors that actually have shields around them. Yep. <laughs> They're factory built, so we're not using electrical tape or anything. So when I push this through here, it's not going to short out and burn. Damn it. Although yeah. that wrench might short something out. <laughs> yes, we have a wrench fod. Did that just come through the... It's down here somewhere. <laughs> it's in the electrical panel. We have fod in the electrical panel. <laughs> How many times did you get done working on a jet, Lance, and have uh, a tool missing out of your toolbox? So, ironically, the in tech in the school where we learned to learn to work on jets, the first one that I had my own job on was an A10, 
Warthog, and it's got those big twin tails. And I replaced a hydraulic um, rudder actuator. And it was a couple hour job. We got the whole thing done. We did our, oh guys, here's another foul. Could you please stop? Your ring. You do not use your <laughs> ring like this when working around 24, any voltage. <laughs> um, anyway, I got all done. It was a several hour job. We did our toolbox inventory and I was missing a very large wrench. Oh, hang on. He just dropped by your shoe there, that little ring that goes, it came, he must've turned it upside down. Oh. Good catch. So hang on, put it, put it on there first. Well, don't, don't give it to me yet. Let me get it up in here. But it goes on before it goes in the hole. I still need to, it's gonna take a minute to get it. He's okay. gotta rethread it. Okay. Anyway, the wrench was up in the rudder compartment <laughs> and we had to take the whole damn, a lot of work. And it was a good lesson. And honestly, I never left a tool in a jet after that <laughs> because they embarrassed me and made a, made a uh, example of me. And well, everyone had to work late that night. Well, that's why your toolboxes are all clearly marked where every tool has a spot. And if something's missing, you know it, right? Yep. This has been a custom coach tutorial by Lance. <laughs> Learn by the lessons of hard knocks. Because <laughs> everything we're talking about here today happened to me, but it took me a lot longer to solve. <laughs> Let me... Uh... considerably. Then turn it off. 400 RPM. Wow. The tachometer is working now? Yep. So we had a tachometer that wasn't working. We found a loose wire and we were able to fix that. Okay. We have propane injection. You ready to go down the house? I'm excited. <laughs> Come on. Well, we had a pretty good day today. Uh, we got quite a bit done. Um, last week when Lance was here, um, I volunteered my work on his bus for him. Uh, just something that I've been doing for some veterans, giving them some free uh, time for working on their buses and things. So in order for him to kind of pay that forward to somebody else, he came out today and volunteered his time uh, to help Bo work on his bus today. So he put in a good, good hard day's work uh, just to kind of repay the favor. That was really nice. Um, we fixed quite a few things. One, the tachometer hadn't been working. It had been working, then it wasn't working, and then it was, and then it wasn't. Um, so he wanted me to look at that and got into that a little bit. Uh, first thing I did was go check the tachometer and normally where the tachometer is, it wasn't there. So th there was no mechanical tachometer on his bus. It was an electronic one. So that told me to look at the electrical system, working, not working, working, not working, probably short, something like that. And unfortunately custom coaches are so, there's so much wiring and things that have been modified. Uh, a bus wiring is already complicated, miles of wiring in there, and then add custom coach conversion to it, and it's a whole nother level of uh, rat's nest everywhere, which they do make it kind of organized, but it's uh, it's chaotically organized. And multiple things that we were looking at would change colors uh, multiple times and things like that too, which I hate when that happens. Uh, but anyways, going through, we pulled out the custom coach book, checked numbers, went through some stuff, compared it to the MCI manual. There was a spot. Uh, where the electrical panel hookup is for the electronic tack. And I went to that terminal and noticed that a wire had was coming out of the, um, the little connector that held it to the, to the post there, the little terminal connector. So once I figured that out, that that's what the problem was, put a new connector on it, boom, tachometer is fixed. Luckily that was, you know, resolved pretty quickly. Uh, there was a problem with the electrical system on the way here. He said his 12 volt system was working in the bus, then it wasn't working and then it was working. Same thing. Like, Oh, here we go again. Um, 
but when he got here, it was working and it had worked all day yesterday and, and this morning it was working fine. We were doing some work on the 12 volt system and then all of a sudden he had no 12 volt system again. And I thought, oh, what did we do? You know, we, we screwed something up or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm checking fuses everywhere, can't find any issues. I pull out and check nearly every single fuse in there. And then Lance is like, you know, sometimes just those little fuse holders get, get loose. And then I just, well, he said that I reached up and touched a couple of them that I hadn't checked yet. And as soon as I touched the one, all the 12 volt came on. So it was just the, the little, the little clips that hold in the fuses. Uh, we just need to pull the fuse out, squeeze it a little tighter and then pop it back in. And that should be fine for another, you know, 30 years on there. Uh, so we got that 12 volt system all worked out. We got the propane injection all installed on there. So now I have more power on hills and things like that. Um, he's got to build the propane box still here and then the mount for the, pro but I've done all the, the hard work of getting everything hooked up and working, uh, electronic side of it. We had to find 12 volt because the bus has 24 volt, obviously. Um, but we had to get 12 volt and then we didn't, we were able to use that terminal, run it to the back, mount the switches, everything. So that's, that's all done. That's nice. Um, fix some oil leaks on there. Uh, he brought an oil pan gasket. He wanted me to replace his oil pan gasket, but when I got under there, his oil pan's not leaking at all. There's a few oil leaks here and there, but for the most part, his bus is pretty clean. Uh, Lance was actually making a joke that like his, the rear compartment where the air conditioning is on that side there, he's like, what is that, like a dressing room? Because it was like spotless back there and so clean. Um, so yeah, just a couple little oil leaks. I fixed a couple coolant leaks. Uh, I think we're gonna change the oil filter tomorrow. He's got a new muffler we're gonna put on it. So just a couple little things like that too. Um, I don't remember what else. Oh, we fixed an air leak. We talk, took out the air fitting and fixed that today. Um, got the wheels back on. He knows he needs to get longer wheel studs now. Um, but I think maybe he's just going to go with steel rims on there instead. Uh, because it's $26.50 per stud on there to replace those. Uh, and that's just the materials. So there's no labor cost involved in that yet. And you might be looking at, you know, two hours of labor per side, maybe to pull the hubs, pull all the studs, put them back in, put the wheels back on maybe an hour and a half just per side per wheel um so anyways you're looking at a pretty significant bill you know a thousand dollars or more in order to do that um and you can just get a steel bud rim brand new steel bud rim for like 80 bucks and a tire shop will charge you like 15 to 20 dollars to mount your tire to it uh maybe another 15 bucks to balance it so that that's the way that i think he's going to go um, that's totally his decision. Um, I didn't touch the wheels. I let, he, he put them back on, he took them off. Um, I, I see that all the time with those stupid, when they come in with those, those covers on their lugs, I just, you've, if you've been watching my channel for a while, every time I see them on an aluminum rim, I'm like, I know what's behind that. Um, and we just see it so, so much. And, um, I, I'm not messing with them. Uh, I told them what to do. I called the shop today about getting the new studs and got the prices for them. Um, but that's, that's his decision, what he wants to do, but I think he's going to lean on, you know, there's a tire shop here in town and he can get uh, steel rims if that's the way he's going to go. Um, they're, they're, they're very readily available and easy, easy to get. And, you know, for under a hundred bucks, that's the way to go. Huh, nice bus though. Uh, he's going to help me change my leaf spring on my bus. So the leaf spring that's laying on the ground, uh, right there behind me, will be going on the bus, uh, hopefully maybe tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be raining all day. Oh man, we have this hurricane thing coming, the remnants of a hurricane. And we are like, right. If like, if you drew a, like they have the cone of where it's going to go. If you drew a line right down the center of where the hurricane thing is going to go, it is right through our town. Um, so we're going to be testing out the driveway culverts, seeing how that works out, uh, how we handle the rain and everything. Um, that'll, that'll be there. So I, we're not going to see the sun for a few days. Um, it's, it's raining here now. It's been raining most of the day. Um, well, we had a couple hours this morning where it wasn't really drizzling, but then after that, uh, Lance brought his son out here. We, I told him he could bring his four wheeler. So his son ripped up the place with his four wheeler today. I think he had a really good time. That was, that was nice and fun. Um, I, he had a good time. That's all that mattered. Uh, it was funny Lance showing him what not to do. He's like, this is what I don't want you to do. <laughs> he does a big donut burnout in the driveway and, uh, it was fun. He had fun. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that he came out and was able to, you know, pay it forward and do some work for Bo. And then, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, more work coming up and uh, lots of projects to get going. Um, Kelly's out of town now. Kelly left to go to Indianapolis for a few days and then she'll be back on Monday. So I'll be kind of bacheloring it here with Bo's going to be on the property. And then I think David is coming. David and Pam are coming back again. And I think somebody else is coming too. I can't remember. It's just, it's crazy around here right now. Um, lots of stuff going on and, uh, hopefully some cool videos coming up.
Lenny is a stink bug magnet. <laughs> they are all over him. Windshield. They're just everywhere. Crazy little things. So Helion sent me these uh, outdoor LED lights. They're in this like extruded, real thick. I'll show you them in, up close in just a second here. Uh, I didn't buy them. They sent us me for free. And uh, hopefully they'll send me some more because I really like them. I'd love to set them up around the bus. We've been using them for lighting in the last few lives that we've done and things like that too. Like they're on right now if I turn them off there. Um, see if I can get plugged back in here. They're... So I'll show them to you in just a second. But I just wanted to mention them. They gave us a coupon code if anybody wants to buy them. Uh, I'll throw the coupon code up in the description, and if it's something you want to interested in buying, uh, they are really, really cool. I think they're a little bit pricey, um, but they are uh, good quality. Um, I, I have a lot of LED strips in the bus in different places that I've used them, and these are far superior to any other that I've that I've seen, just construction-wise and durability. They're waterproof. Um, that's all, all good things to be able to use like that. So anyways, check them out if something you're interested in. Uh, you might like them. Uh, I really like them for the campsite and even just for the lighting for the lives and stuff like that, uh, to have an LED strip do what they do. We've been real happy with it. We got this really cool uh, roll up LED light. It really lights up the outside here. We got it on our canopy and it's portable and it's pretty cool. It has either a 12 volt adapter for like cigarette lighter or just a regular household 110. It rolls up easily on this little spool. The LED stuff is in this really thick um, kind of rubbery material. It's super, you know, so it's made for outdoor use. It feels really nice and it's real solid and durable. 